Hello, welcome to Boarding Us with Niramas. Today it's time for a run through of one of my favorite games of all time, Terra Mystica. And this game is designed by Helge Ostertag and Jens Drygemuller, and it was published by Seaman Games. It's a game for two to five players, and it takes around 30 minutes per player. So, uh, this game is a bit complex in a way, it's sort of a lot of things to get into at the start when you haven't seen it before, so it's going to be quite a long video. Uh, I'm going to do it in two parts, of course, as usual. And of course, I'm going to be playing a two-player game together with Draco here. So, Draco is ready, and I think I'm ready as well. Uh, we almost did the setup. I saved a few moments for a uh, few few things here. Uh, so, <laughs> here's the main map. Uh, we have this cult board over here with the different elements: the fire, the water, the earth, and the wind. We can climb on this to get different benefits and also to get points at the end of the game. Uh, over here we have all of these tiles. There's a bunch of them. Uh, they do different things. The base of the game is, of course, we are terraforming or uh, the landscape here. So we have this <coughs> sort of um, tiles to change the landscape. And we do that by digging with our spades. So <coughs> to start off the map looks like this and then we can change these terrain types so that we can live there. And there's 14 different uh, factions in this game. Uh, so you have all these factions are sort of living on different uh, kinds of, well there's seven different uh, colors so sort of, seven different terrain types. And these factions have different ways to get points but the goal for everyone is to get the most points uh, as you can see on the track here on the outside and we start on 20 points in this game and that's because you can lose points so you sort of have to have a buffer here to to take from if you would lose points but that could be good as well because you lose when you lose points at certain times you get another benefit instead so we'll get into that later we we'll just take it step by step and i think i will catch on everything. If I'm missing something, just tell me in the comment section if you have any questions or ideas or if you're sort of, um, well, if you have any questions about the game. Uh, also, if you have played the game, I would recommend you to watch anyway because I'm going to go through, sort of, uh, <laughs> you know, share my thoughts and share my mind, some tactics and so on. Perhaps you will get some new input that you can bring to your game. And if you haven't played it, uh, if you don't have it, then I hope this video can help you out to see how it runs and how it works and sort of uh, learn the game a bit and so as a complement to the uh, manual of course. And also maybe it's a game that you want to purchase that would fit your gaming group then you could check this run through and see if that's the case. Alright, so let's get started here. We have the factions. So every player have a faction board. I'm the nomads, so I'm, st I'm starting in desert, and I want to be in desert, so to get to the desert I will have to dig the and terraform the other terrain types, and they are sort of the, um, uh, I don't know what's it called, the wasteland, the red one, and the dirt land, the brown one, they are close to desert, um, as you can imagine, so they are quite easy for me, they only take one uh, spade action, or one spade to transform them into desert. On the other hand, the, the uh, swamps and the forest, that takes a lot of more work to transform that into a desert. So therefore they will take three spades to get there. So <clears throat> I will try to sort of place myself and expand in a way that I, well, that it doesn't get too expensive. Also uh, on my player board here, I have I have a bunch of things. Uh, this little system here is called power. We have these little markers. And so each player starts with 12, but you can have sort of different, uh, some, well, as we can see over here, Draco's side, he has a lot of more of his uh, power to start off with in, in this bowl here. So it's, it's kind of like three different bowls. And this power will rotate. So. The, this is the sort of uh, first bowl here, down here, that's where every rotation starts and they move up to the second one and then to the third one. And once they are in the third one they can be used uh, for different things as we can see here. They can be used five power rotation from the third bowl to the first, can be used to get a priest, three can be used to get a worker, 
when one can be transformed into one coin. So that's one way to get resources and also on the board we have some of the actions here that you can do that required a certain number of power rotation in order to do them and also uh, once they are done they will be covered up so then for that round they are used. So uh, let's see I think we should start from this uh, play raid and here we have the different actions that you can do on your turn. Every time it's your turn, you're going to do one action, and then it's the second, the next player's turn. And so you keep going until you have all passed. Because once you sort of can't do any more actions, then you can pass. <clears throat> and the benefit of passing first is that you will be the first player, you will get this first player marker. Uh, which is quite good. So, you can, one for one here, you can dig uh, or transform. So you can transform a square and you can also build a dwelling in the same action. Dwellings are sort of the base of the game, that's how you get your workers. Action number two, you can increase your ship's uh, re uh, sort of reach. And by doing that you will get points, but you will also be able to connect these uh, different tiles over the water with the ships. Uh, number three, you can increase your ability to dig or to transform, so you will increase your speed. So, so to start off here, uh, it cost me three workers, this little square is workers. Uh, it cost me three workers to do one spade. If I would do this action, which is the one down here, it would cost me two workers, five coins and a priest, then I would increase my my uh, sort of transforming ratio, uh, I would get 6 points, this symbol here is points. And I would also, from now on, only need 2 workers to transform one step, sort of on this sort of uh, rondelle. Alright, sounds complicated, right? <laughs> well, it is if you haven't uh, seen this before, but don't worry, we're going to get through it all. So there we have the number four, we can upgrade from uh, our building, so from a dwelling, which is, let's see if I do this, this is a dwelling, a little house, sort of, of course in many games, and then you can upgrade this one into a trading house, which is a trading post, which is this bigger house here. The trading post, you could uh, either go and upgrade it into a, a temple, which are the round one buildings here, or you could upgrade it to a stronghold, which is the big uh, castle building here. And from a temple you can also upgrade to a sanctuary, which is this big piece. So it's quite lovely components. Uh, I like these old wooden components. And okay, so then we have action number five, where you can use a priest on the cult track to sort of sacrifice him and put him in these places, and then you would move up. Uh, the first priest ever sacrificed on the wind track will move that place marker three uh, spaces up and so on. And then we have the number six is use um, one of these uh, actions that are down here that require power rotation. Number seven is use an action that is either on your player card, on a special tile that you got or a favorite tile and these will come later on you will see them. And number eight is you can pass it's this scroll symbol, and once you pass, you flip your tile. Well, not this one. <laughs> you flip your your uh, special tile for that round, and you get uh, the first play marker if you're the first one to do it. All right, that was sort of what you can do on your turn. Now let's go into explaining more of the player board and the basics, because this game has to have, I mean, a bit of explaining before we can get going, I guess. So. If we take a look at the player board, let's do it on Draco's here. Draco is the halflings, you know, like Frodo and the guys <laughs> down here. He likes to live in the dirt ground and he he can also, you know, he's, it's easy for him to transform into desert and into the, the stony ground. But all right, that was, uh, let's see, right down here, you will see this symbol there, the little hand like that. That is income. That is what you get at the start of every round. It's sort of like what you produce or what you what you get in one year or one round or whatever you want to call it. And as you can see, if you would remove a dwelling here, if you build a dwelling, then you would have another income here. And then that's the worker, the cube. So now I would have two workers, but if I build another dwelling, I get three workers every round. So let's say I build a trading post. I upgrade one of these dwellings into a trading post. 
then I would receive two coins and that is a power rotation so I would rotate the power up here so and then if I build my stronghold or Draco stronghold he will get two strong two uh, power rotations and one time he will get three spades to use right away and these are all different all these uh, factions are asymmetrical so uh, the cost and what you the benefits and so on are, can vary a lot which makes the game really fun you can have all this variation when you play so I mean, I haven't played all the 14 factions yet, so there's a lot to try out, different tactics and so on. And so if you would build a shrine, you would, well, you take them from the left to the right, to be precise. Then you would get a uh, priest in this case. And if you build the sanctuary, then you get a priest, in Draco's case, that's uh, not all, I think that's not always the case, but... Then you will also get this symbol here, which means that you can build a city with only three tiles if the sanctuary is one of them. Uh, now a city is something you want to get, and a city you will get by getting an area that is directly connected with buildings that have a total value of 7. And the value, you can see down here, here we have... A one, a two, and a three level in value. And it also has to consist of four different uh, buildings. Unless you have built uh, the sanctuary in there, then it's only three. Alright, so let's get started in a way. The first thing that happens, because I'm the first player, uh, drawn ram randomly sort of. And uh, then Draco is the first one that's going to get to pick one of these tie bonus tiles. We have one of these each, every round. And the other ones that we don't pick, they get some money on them, and then we pick another one for the next round. So they will uh, rotate as well. So let's say Draco, he will pick this one here, which means he will get an income of two for that round, for the first round. And also he gets a special action. So now he can cover up this as an action. And that's, uh, let's see, that's action number seven down there. That's a special action. Then he would be able to do one spade digging. And he can also add workers as well if he want to do it at the same time. Then he could do more uh, digging than that. And when he digs he can also uh, build a dwelling at the same time. Alright, so that was Draco picking that one. Uh, I'm going for the money one here. I'll just grab this as six bucks. That's quite good. That's the income in the beginning. And so now we will place our starting dwelling. So we have normally have the most of the factions have two each, and the nomads, which I'm playing, actually have three. Uh, so you can see down here, it's my special ability. I have three dwellings to start off. Drac, on the other hand, he has a special thing here that uh, when he digs, when he transforms, he spends a spade then he gets one point all the time for the whole game, so that's quite good. These halflings are really uh, good in my opinion. Alright, so I'm the first player, I will post place my first one. And now it has to be desert, and I have to start thinking, well I should get into the whole adjacency I guess, because there's two kinds of adjacency in this game. The direct adjacency is, let's say these two are here, uh, these two are direct adjacent because they're next to each other. If they were like this and I had built a bridge here, they would also be direct adjacent. But if they were like this and I had one on my shipping, my sort of ship value, if I upgraded it to one, then they will still be connected over the river because it's one space in between them. But they would be indirect adjacent, which means they wouldn't form a city with the rule of having four tiles four buildings next to each other to form a city and they also wouldn't count for the end game scoring so let's get into the end game scoring I'm just taking as I'm figuring out here uh, there's always two goals that are always the same uh, let's see the first one is have the biggest area connected um, oh yeah I'm wrong there of course they are if you have the uh, the boat value in direct adjacency, then it counts for this, but it doesn't count for the cities. That's the big uh, difference there, sorry. All right, so let's say that I end the game, just as an example, I end the game like this, or sort of like this, and I have a shipping value of one, then my area would consist of three, because they are all connected. You don't need a bridge for that. 
but I wouldn't have any city, of course, because there's only, uh, th well, there's only three of them anyway. All right, so the biggest uh, area that is connected by uh, any kind of adjacency. And the first, the one that has the biggest area gets 18 points at the end, the second one gets 12, and the third one gets 6. Uh, so that's kind of a big deal. Um, I should also mention that this game, I think, is not really a two-player game at all. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this as a two-player game, really. Um, I mean, you can do it, but uh, and I'm going to do it for the run through here, but I would say that, uh, I mean, it's more fun if you like four players uh, or even five. Uh, because yeah, it's not really a player interaction game, but at the same time you sort of have some player interaction and you can block each other You can get some benefits from being close to the other players and so on So uh, well enough of that. That's that but that's why you can figure I mean if we are four players then one of us is going to be left out of the end of the game bonus So that's a big deal now for two players one is going to get 18 the other one gets 12 That's not that big of a swing uh, Then we have the call tracks. These are also the same every game the first one on each cal track gets 8 points, the second one gets 4, and the third one gets 2. And that's the track over here that I mentioned earlier. So at the wind, for instance, right now Draco is in the lead. Uh, so if that was the end goal, end status, then he would get 8 points and I would get 0. Because I'm at 0, then I'm not even on the track, I don't count. But if I'm the second one, I would get 4. And why is he up ahead of me here? Well, if you take a look at the board here, the player board, the halfling starts one step up on the earth and one step up on the wind. They also start with three workers, so we're going to distribute them. And these are workers. Uh, one of the components in this game that is not that fancy, but they work. I mean, they, they it's I don't really mind it, but they're kind of boring in a way. And so they have, he, Draco will start with 15 coins. So he will get some, I like that there's some twos in this game as well. So he will get the coins there. And so we take a look at my board. Uh, the nomads get two workers. And 15 coins as well. And this could vary a lot between different factions. And uh, it's quite fun actually, I think, with this um, asymmetrical... Uh, starting and sort of not just the starting but the whole game is asymmetrical in, in how we can do things and so on So that was sort of the setup and now we go back to the other part of the setup Which is me placing one of these dwellings somewhere and the thing the reason I came into this whole thing with the whole area and the Jesus is because I have to think about already when I'm placing these uh, Let's say I place one in this desert here and I place one all the way over here, then it's going to be very hard for me to connect them at the end of the game to get the most uh, connected area bonus. So I want to have them quite close, but not, I mean, I don't want to have them next to each other, you know, because then I wouldn't be able to make two different cities. Because as soon as these are connected by direct adjacency, which is next to each other or a bridge, then they count as one in case in sort of measuring a city. All right, enough of that. Let's get one over here. And then it's Draco's turn, since he's the second player, or the last player in this case, he gets to put both of his dwellings at the same time. So he's going to put one next to me here, and he's going to put one over there. Right, then it goes back to me, and I place my second one. Hmm. I'll go down here. And I actually have a third one as well. This one goes last. I, if we were four players, this one always goes last, because it's the Nomad's bonus one. I'll just put it over here, so I could um, get started quite well there. All right, so that was the setup. We got both got our uh, tiles uh, ready, and we will start the first round. That's 19 minutes in. Sorry, guys, but this game takes some explanation. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to go straight ahead and sort of uh, point out these as well. Then we sort of cover, covered most of it. Uh, these tiles are put down randomly, so there's a bunch of them, and we're going to play the game over six rounds. Now each round there is a goal, so for the first round here, the goal is to upgrade two dwellings into trading posts. Then we get three points every time we do that. At the end of the round, if you are for each four spaces you are up on the blue track, on the water track, you will get an, uh, directly get a spade action. Uh, so that's uh, really nice. I really like this in the game that you can see already from the start. You can see, well, 
at round one, two, three, four, at four, we are, have a goal of building cities, and then we get five bonus points for doing that. So you can sort of plan ahead. Uh, these come out randomly, so sometimes you get a city down here, which is really hard to do at first round. So it's sort of a, a that's, that, that it could be tricky to get all of these done, but at least you can get some of these bonuses in, so we get some points from that. So uh, that's one of the main ways to get points during the game. Then you have the end game scoring as well. So let's see, I'm up to 20 minutes. I think I will actually uh, do this in three parts. So this will be the setup video. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see, I think we are ready to get started. And so we will do it like this. We'll just pan out and I will say thank you for watching. And of course, Click the link here, up here if you're on a, a computer, otherwise just uh, go in the um, on your mobile phone and click on the part 2 for the actual start of the run through where I will start playing. Uh, so sorry for, for taking such a long time, but this is a quite complicated game. So uh, thank you for watching and you know, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. And of course, I will see you in the next part 2 where we get started and you will see how the game actually runs. Thank you for watching. Bye.